Today on Backcountry Journal, we are fishing in the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont in the middle of August. Before we get started, let's take a quick look at some of the gear we'll be using. A low 14-foot aluminum boat, a Minn Kota Vantage 50 electric trolling motor, an Evertroll marine battery, and our fishing line is spider wire fusion in 10 pound test. Let's get out on the water. Today on Backcountry Journal, we're on a small pond in the northeast kingdom of Vermont. And uh, it's a pretty shallow pond, and we're trolling. And our goal basically is to catch maybe the odd bass, perch, uh, panfish, um, pretty much whatever is cruising in shallow water. And, of the afternoon, and, and perch is pretty likely to do that, so the smallmouth somewhat as well. I was just talking to a gentleman who caught a pickerel, uh, so that's a possibility also. Uh, our technique today is we've got two rods, and we're in a low aluminum rowboat, a 14-footer, uh, that was uh, thankfully provided to us by Lil, and it's, it's a very nice little boat, and we're out here trolling with an electric motor. Uh, and our technique is we've got a couple of soft rods that are good for trolling, very light tackle as you can see. We've got them loaded both with uh, the spider wire fusion, a 10 pound test, but it's a six pound diameter, so it's very narrow, but also very strong. As far as baits, I've got a couple of 1 8 ounce spinner baits on each rod. One is red and white, the other is kind of a bluish, uh, brownish, blackish color. And we're just kind of towing them around. The average depth here is about 10 feet. Pull it around, see what, uh, see what goes for it. See if we get any customers. And um, Whichever color works the best, we'll switch over to uh, so that we're pulling two of them instead of one of them. So it's kind of a process of elimination. And uh, we'll be uh, trolling around and we'll get back to you in a few minutes uh, as we catch fish. Okay, we have a customer. Yeah, I think it's a pretty good one. It might be a smallmouth that just left out of the water here. And as it gets a little closer to the boat. Camera is going to show it. It's going to come right up on your right. I think it's a fairly good sized fish. I think it's a bass. Largemouth bass. Right on a Red and white spinnerbait. White with some red. Alright, let's take care of this fish. Looks like it might be about a two pound bass, one and a half to two pound bass. Alright, so here's our largemouth bass. You can tell the largemouth by the stripe along his body, the black stripe, as well as the large mouth. He's been out of the water here for a few minutes, not a few minutes, but a few seconds. Let's get him back in so he can go back and see his friends. That's a largemouth bass. Let's have a quick look at uh, how we caught about caught that. I'm telling this uh, this one eighth ounce spinner bait, white with some red dressing, the red head. I always seem to have good luck with a red head for some reason. It's got the uh, Colorado blades, which give it a little bit more vibration. And uh, we've been trolling around at a slower speed on the uh, on the electric motor. And we turned it up a notch, and now we've, we've been getting some bites. So that's the thing when you're out trolling or fishing is to experiment, experiment, go a little faster, go a little slower, see what, uh, see what gets you some bites. We're going to troll around a little, a little bit more and uh, see if we can get another. See you in a bit. Looks like turning up the speed is just what the doctor ordered because this is our second fish in as many minutes. And uh, I don't know if it's another largemouth or what this is, but it's a healthy, respectable pickerel. Not a big picker, but a picker. Let's take the uh, spinnerbait, the other spinnerbait we have with the striped blades. And, uh, this one. Yeah. You can feel the muscle in his tail. Alright, we're not going to torment him any longer. We're going to bring him in. We're looking. We're going to go back to where he came from. Get on the boat. 
Yeah, these guys have Velcro teeth. Oh, this might be a small pike. Let's see what he's got. Oh, yeah. This isn't a pickerel at all. This, this is either a muskie or a pike. So this isn't a pickerel at all, now that I've had a closer look at it. This is a muskie or a pike, a small one. I'm going to let them loose, and I, I should have a reference book so I can tell the difference between a muskie and a pike, but this is one of them, a small one. I'm going to let him get back to what he was doing, see if we can catch another fish. Turn my glasses off. He spray a little water on me, so you got to get that water off of there. But the comment I wanted to make is as I was releasing the fish back into the water, I gave him a good push. I had to set him in there head first, give him a good push. And what that does is kind of the equivalent of when we have been underwater swimming, come up and take a big breath of air because we've been out without air for a few moments. That's what get, that gives him. It forces water and air through the gills and uh, gives him kind of a quick burst of resuscitation uh, to help him get better acclimated once he's been back in the water because as he's out of the water a few moments, he's as winded as you or I might be having been under the water. So it's, it's, it gives a little bit of help that we can give the fish. And uh, so second fish today. We've had success on each lure. Let's take a look at the lure we caught the pike on. Kind of bent it up. Just a one eighth ounce spinner bait. It's got long willow blades with stripes. Got some blue and black on there. Some kind of white uh, translucent looking, uh, pearly looking uh, skirt happening and a touch of red. I always like a touch of red on my spinner baits. Can't tell you why, but all I can, what I can tell you is that whenever I have a touch of red on a spinner bait, it produces. So both of our spinner baits today have a touch of red. I don't know if it's lock or the red or what it is, but we've had a fish on each. Let's keep going. All right, we're going to call it a day. A um, couple of notes as far as what we've done today is uh, the speed seemed to be what made the difference. Um, we were trolling at a, a fairly slow speed and we we're, weren't having any luck, so we tried at a slightly faster speed. And that's what made the difference. We caught two fish in uh, a fairly short period of time, and I think that's what accounts for for that. Uh, we we cruised a little bit faster even without any luck. So I don't know at what point uh, you could be trolling too fast, but I say it's worth experimenting with because the worst that can happen is that you don't catch fish. The best that can happen is that you do. And do I? No, I don't think I have one on here. The other comment I wanted to make is that uh, uh, one of my favorite ways of fishing is trolling, and you're going to see a lot of that on this program. One of my favorite baits for trolling is a spinner bait, and here's why. Get a little bit of weed action on here, but if I had a crankbait, I'd have a lot more. Now, I do like crankbaits, but they cost a lot of money, and they're a lot easier to hang up and they're a lot easier to lose. And call me cheap, call me practical, call me quirky, but I'd rather spend less money on a spinner bait that is less likely to hook up because the hook is pointing upward instead of downward. So it's more likely to go through weeds, bounce off rocks and logs, um, much more likely to keep your lure. And I, I think it's as effective as a crankbait. Crankbaits, again, like I said, I, I believe they work very well. I've had good luck with them, but I've also lost a lot of four, five, six, seven, eight dollar crankbaits. And that, you're never happy when you lose a bait like that. So that's, that's my comment about that. Uh, on future shoots, we're going to go in deeper ponds, and uh, I'm going to talk about how you get a spinner bait lower or you know, deeper in the water in a deeper pond. There's ways to do it, and we're going to experiment with some of them. So stay tuned for future fishing shoots. And uh, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.